guys. Today, I want to talk about a problem I often see with people writing their memoir. There's a tendency to describe their life instead of telling stories from their life. And there's a big difference between the two. More on this coming up. My name is Wayne Dale. I'm a Random House author and the founder of Memoir Writing for Geniuses. Description is fine in your book, but not if you use it instead of plot. Let me explain what I mean. I'm a memoir writing teacher, so I read a lot of manuscripts. And what I see so often is that people will describe their life. So they will describe a relationship or they will describe their time in Borneo or they will describe their whole life. So description is okay in a memoir, but it's not okay if that is all your reader gets. In fact, if you have just description in your book, you're never going to get to plot. Okay, when I say description, I'm not just talking about describing setting. It was a cold, dark path I'd wandered down. Shadows flanked me on both sides. What I'm talking about is describing your life, and you're probably guilty of this. Okay, now some description can be great. I want to talk about description first so you get a sense of what I mean. Let me give you an example of good description. This is from Drinking a Love Story. I drank. I drank Fumé Blanc at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, and I drank double shots of Johnny Walker Black on the rocks at a dingy Chinese restaurant across the street from my office, and I drank at home. For a long time, I drank expensive red wine, and I learned to appreciate the subtle differences between a silky Merlot and a tart Cabernet Sauvignon and a soft, earthy Beau Castel from the south of France. But I never really cared about those nuances because, honestly, they were beside the point. I drank when I was happy, and I drank when I was anxious, and I drank when I was bored, and I drank when I was depressed, which was awful. There we get a description of a period of time in this author's life, or you might say it's a description of her relationship with alcohol. But it is a description. There's not actually plot happening here. Why not? Well, she's talking about her drinking in general terms, but nothing is really happening. Now, I want to show you the difference. Contrast that with what comes next in this text. I started to raid my parents' liquor cabinet the year my father was dying. He'd be in the back of their house in Cambridge, lying in the hospital bed in their bedroom, and I'd steal into the front hall bathroom and pull out a bottle of old granddad that I'd hidden behind the toilet. It tasted vile. The bottle must have been 15 years old. But my father was dying, dying very slowly and gradually from a brain tumor, so I drank it anyway, and it helped. My mother found that bottle empty that April, the day of my father's funeral. I'd thrown most of the others away, but I must have forgotten that one, and she'd discovered it stashed behind the toilet as she was cleaning the front bathroom for guests. I was sitting at the dining room table, and as she walked through the room, the bottle in her hand, she glared at me, a look of profound disappointment. So I lied. That was before, I said, referring to a promise I'd made her six months before my father died. Two drinks a day, I'd said. No more than that. I promise I'll cut down. Okay, so did you feel the difference there? In the beginning of this text, the narrator is describing her relationship with alcohol. She's describing her life in general terms. However, there is a point in this text when we actually start getting a scene. Did you feel where that happened. My mother found that bottle empty that April, the day of my father's funeral. Okay, so that's when we're actually starting to live through this with the narrator. And that is the difference between description and the beginning of plot. Plot begins with scenes. In fact, scenes are the building blocks for your plot. Scenes are where stuff will happen in your book. So what happens in the scene I just read you? Not the description, but rather the scene. Oh, so Caroline's mother finds the bottle. Caroline's mother glares at her and Caroline promises to cut down. So things are happening in the scene. Things happen in scenes and they don't happen in descriptions. So that is why if you have too much description in your book, you will never get to plot. In order to create plot, you need scenes. So one of the things I try to teach my students is how important events are to their book. Things have to happen in your book. Okay, so if you don't believe me, I want you to do this. 
I want you to go and tell a friend about the movie you saw last night or the episode you saw on Netflix. Now, if you record yourself and you listen back to it, you will find that what you were doing is talking about what actually happened in the episode. So that is really important to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to writing, I think as writers, we fall in love with words, and that tends to translate into a love of description, of describing our lives. But it is so important to keep in mind that things have to happen in your book. Events are the building blocks for plot. So the reason I wanted to make a video on this is because so many people fall into this trap, uh, and I include myself. When I finished my first memoir, I then wanted to write a sequel to it. So my, la my first memoir ends with me in Bolivia. And the next one begins where that one left off. I moved to Los Angeles, but I moved to this Mexican neighborhood. And I'm just about the only white person living in this neighborhood. So I wanted to write about this experience. Unfortunately, instead of writing about what happens to me in this neighborhood, I basically describe my life there. And I have a whole chapter that is nothing but description. So I describe waking up in the morning. I describe a day at work. I describe where it is I get my groceries. So I'm gonna give you a really short description from this chapter so you can get a sense of what I mean. After I read this to you, I wanna help you understand how to fix this problem. There were the joys of the grocery store John's with its bazaar of unrecognizable foreign brands at third world prices. You could buy fresh Mexican cheese, dried chilies, pinto beans in bulk, frozen tropical fruits imported from Central America. The butcher counter offered cuts of steak and chicken, as well as tongue, tripe, and pig's feet. From the exterior, it was obvious that John's had once been a Vaughn's, part of the successful grocery store chain. Apparently, the new owner had figured it would be cheaper to change a single letter than to buy an entirely new sign. Plus, he'd already have an established base of loyal Vons customers, who hopefully wouldn't notice the difference. We've only changed a letter, folks. Come for the new low prices. Stay for the pig's feet. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with putting description in your book. Here's the mistake I made. When you write your book, description should always lead into a scene. So after describing John's, something should actually happen there. I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute. Before I do, please be sure to sign up for my free seven-part class on how to structure your memoir. I'd also be really grateful if you would hit the subscribe button. It really helps this channel. Okay, back to describing versus plot. So following my description of John's, what I need to do is make sure that something happens. I need to take this description and let it lead into a scene. Okay, so here's an example of how I might do this. One day I ran into my neighbor in the tortilla aisle. She raced up to me and threw her arms around my neck. The pig's feet are on sale this week. Gotta stock up. Okay, so now my description is leading me into a scene. I describe John's in a general way and then something happens there. But what I see so many people doing is just describing their life. So they would describe John's and then they would describe their apartment and then they would describe getting to their apartment and leaving their apartment and getting to work and a day at work and so on. But that is just describing your life. And if you do that, it will feel to your reader like nothing is happening in your book. You won't have plot and you will quickly lose your reader. So keep this in mind. Things need to happen in your book. And what happens in your book needs to happen in the form of a scene. That is why scenes are the building blocks of plot. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. If you want to know more about the one element that you can never leave out of your scene, watch this video next. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.